up fellow collectors uh so this is going to be a uh brave vlog review or something it's a movie response i just got back home from watching the uh, ninja turtles movie uh shout out to uh old skull face for tip of the hat sir for um letting me know that it was out because i totally did not know that it was coming out today i didn't know it was coming out this weekend um and also uh Tip it old hat to old Bobby Skullface for um, totally destroying everything I believed in before I even left the house to get to the movies. So I got a uh, so I got a PM and uh, Bobby was at the uh, theater. He was preparing to enjoy or not enjoy the uh, Ninja Turtles movie, as it were. And I frantically gathered my children and dipped out of the house to get to the uh, theater in time to uh, catch the movie. And that was a problem in itself because I was looking on Fandango and Fandango had uh, one theater with a time that it did not actually have. So when I got there and realized it didn't actually have the movie at that time, that's my wife's laptop in the back. You can see the pink. That's not my pink. Not that there's anything wrong with pink, but anyways. So I ended up having to, to scuffle on to a different theater to catch it. Um, so And we lucked out. We only missed the... Um, we only missed the the previews, so uh, which the previews might have been better than the actual movie. Okay, so let's get right to it. Um, my personal opinion, and I am a, an adult. Uh, my personal opinion is that this one was not quite as good as the first one. Um, this may vary among you, uh, depending on age groups, because it, it seems to have been. Um, more directed to the kiddies, whereas the first, I mean, it's Ninja Turtles, so you expect it to kind of be about the kids anyways, right, but um, in this case, it seemed to be specifically directed towards the kids, and there's it, really nothing wrong with that, because uh, Ninja Turtles is supposed to be all about the kids, even though it's from our childhood, right, but I mean, it's, it's, it's spanned, it's breached that, that, uh, that, that barrier of time, it's, it's uh, spanned, through, it's spanned decades, right, so, um, or at least a decade, decades, yeah, decades, so, um, it, it's okay that it's, um, been directed more so for the kids, gummy souls, so, right out of the bat, um, the animation, the graphic, the CGI was pretty awesome, there were some drawbacks here and there, um, I noticed that as the, and the main thing that stuck out to me is that I noticed that when the turtles, uh, actually were walking, when Bebop and Rocksteady were walking through a scene, gravity didn't seem to affect them at all they seemed lighter than air it really looked uh fake it looked really fake i mean don't get me wrong the the characters look good the turtles look great the uh bebop and rocksteady they look great but the the uh cgi it just the the weight wasn't there you know what i'm saying like in the fighting movements weight was there um flipping and jumping around but just being able to walk from point a to point b it looked it looked really um for lack of a better word, uh, it looked like it was done by a novice. I, I mean, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to be fair, but it just it it didn't look it didn't look quite right. If you can get past that, it's not a problem for you. Then, uh, then the rest of the movie kind of rolls on from there. Okay, so you come into the scene, and I'm I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to do spoilers or not yet. So if I get to the point where I'm going to do spoilers, I'm going to tell you, hey, dip out, right? So, um, or maybe I won't. <laughs> so you oh, the movie opens up from Ragacy and the turtles are um you know they're doing their turtle brother thing hanging out enjoying the sea's nightlife and um uh April O'Neil was on the case trying to track down uh Madea Madea and uh it just reeked of Michael Bay let me just say this Michael Bay only produced this movie, uh, executive produced it, but it felt like what he did to the Transformers, it felt like he did it to this movie. Like his stench was his stench was all over it, right? So, um uh April O'Neil is trying to in trying to get some secret from um from Medea Tyler Perry for those of you who don't know Medea movies. And it, it was just a whole thing of capturing how hot uh, Megan Fox is, which Megan Fox is hot, so it's, it's not really a problem, right? But it, it was just like, you know, all the slow motion, everything is slow motion, every every time, as a matter of fact, in every single scene of the movie that was Megan Fox, for the most part, it was slow motion, so <laughs> that was just, 
a bit much. Uh, you did get a, a nice little uh, butt scene, a little butt shot of the uh, Megan Fox butt. Um, but it, I don't know. It was just, it, 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 it could have been Transformers. It could have been Ninja Turtles. Megan Fox, same deal. Inserted. There you got. Uh, okay, so we go from there to let's let's, let's take a t- let's, let's talk about the uh, foot soldiers. I did like the foot soldiers. They are a bonus in this movie because the foot soldiers, the foot clan, they were more ninjas. If you remember the first movie, they seemed more like um, urban contract like contractors, like like paramilitary, you know. Um, in this one, they were actually ninjas. They did have uh, martial arts skill. They were flipping around, kicking and shit, jumping over shit. So they were they were really cool. I, I dug that part. I appreciated that part of it. Um, <sighs> Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, let, let's 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 entertain a thought right quick before we go any further. Okay, so typically when we talk about these these nerd movies, these collector movies, right, um, or geek movies, right, that's that's from our childhood and from comics and things like cartoons from our childhood, from comics and crap like that. We typically um, really really wish that the director, the producers, the studios, the powers that be would stick to the source material, would draw from the the actual comics or the cartoon or the toy that is that is inspired by, right? And, and we're like, why why don't you just do it? Just be unapologetic unapolog- unapologetic is late. Get off my back. Just just stick to it. Give a Superman costume. Put him in some tights. Put him in, put Batman in the tights. You know, we, we wanna see it. We say we want to see it. We think we want to see it. I think this is a case of the director, the producers, the creative team trying to stick to the source material or as as much as possible. I mean, it, it was with some updates, but trying to stick to the source cartoon um, and recapture that. And they did not apologize for it. It was so cartoony. And you know what? For the first time, I was like, ah... This is why they changed shit. Aha! Aha! If you haven't seen Coming to America, that's the, the Jewish guy in the barbershop. Okay, so it was heavily cartoonish. Too cartoonish. As an adult, I who, who collects toys? Look at the room, I collect toys. It was way more cartoonish than I would have wanted. And it... I don't know. It it seemed like the bad assery was was ejected, and the cartoonish playfulness was injected. And it's cool for turtles to have a bit of cartoonishness, but it was just over the top. It was really, really, really cartoony. So um, I found myself struggling through that. The turtles, um, they they did they seemed a little short of what they were in the last movie and i i don't know is if the, the expectations were a bit higher for it but they seemed a little bit short of what they were in the last movie uh splinter was definitely more of just a um just a a, a placeholder to say you have splinter in the movie and and if you remember like in the cartoon splinter really was like a, a focus of uh a, a, a focus of your interest, a focus of time, a focus of story, and it kept with that in this one. So, <sighs> the turtle lair was bigger and better um, than before, uh, and I'm, I was cool with that. Um, Shredder, the guy that got to play Shredder in this one, he, I, I, I like the look of Shredder, but he was just again, he was so Orokosaki from the cartoon. Uh, it's just he wasn't overly silly. Now Shredder in the cartoons was really kind of goofy. He was not that. Uh, he had the whole force dark voice thing. Um, but Shredder was he was acceptable. You know, after seeing that first huge Shredder with a transformer kit on his back, um, seeing a Shredder in regular form with the regular Shredder helmet, I like that. I would have preferred to have the guy who played the original Shredder play this Shredder because I think the guy who played the original Shredder was way more intense way more intimidating um the chick i think she was his daughter uh in the, in the comics or whatever in the cartoons i think she's his daughter i'm not sure they didn't really talk about that get into that she was just the second in charge so um that was that um i don't want to ruin too much the transformation for the rocksteady and bebop the way they dealt with the whole ooze thing even the way that shredder came about the ooze um it <sighs> We really wanted Krang, and I know it seems like I'm jumping around, but I'm really telling you the things that added and subtracted from the movie. We wanted Krang in this. Krang, to me, ruined it. <laughs> as much as we wanted Krang, Krang ruined it. 
not just Krang, not just him by himself. But um, the introduction of Krang to uh, Rokosaki and to the movie, it was just really weird. It just, it didn't seem, it didn't seem like a lot of thought went into that. You know, it, it just seemed like something you would see in a cartoon. And then um, the transformation going back to that with uh, Bebop and Rocksteady didn't make sense at all. It did not make any sense. I'm going to just leave it there. You can figure that part out for yourself. Now, seeing them, I was really happy and excited to see them, but I must admit, as the movie drew on and drew on, I was getting tired of them. I was tired of the same old, my man, and all of that dumb shit. It, it was it was, it was, was a bit, it was too silly. It was just some Sesame Street shit. So, um, that is what it is. Now, let's get to the conversation I really want to have. The Arrow. Never ever put that young man in a movie again. Ever, <laughs> never. Uh, this is why um, you know people people make the, the people ask the question of can we get um, this popular show like the Marvel dealing with the Marvel properties? Okay, we've got the we got the uh, the Marvel characters on the TV shows. And we want to see them cross over into the movies. No, I've never been a fan of that, and this is why the shit did not cross over well at all. Stephen Amell and I like I liked him fairly decently on the uh, Arrow show. The Arrow was kind of gotten Ugh, now, but I, I kind of liked him on it. Um, he was darker on the if if he would have been that character from Arrow on this is Casey Jones, I think it would have worked out a lot better. Casey Jones is supposed to be a grimy, gritty dude, right? And Casey Jones in this one is just a pretty boy wimp. Right, who supposedly has anger issues? So the anger issues, they're 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 really forced when he loses his temper. It just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem hardcore. It doesn't seem dangerous. It doesn't seem intimidating. It seems like a pretty boy surfer guy who does CrossFit, losing his temper and throwing glasses. Aha! Remember that. Um, and it's just, uh, and and then his voice, he's really, he just really comes across as a pretty boy who's really wimpy. He could be a tough guy. He looks like he should be a tough guy, but he really comes across as wimpy. Now, is he a wimp? I don't think so. I mean, there's like, there's a lot of his own stunts. He does most of his own stunts. All of that shit he does on Arrow with the flipping into the fucking uh, ladder and shit. He does all that shit. So he's not, he's not a wimp. But the character, the Casey Jones character, is not what you're used to as Casey Jones. Especially if you're coming from our generation where you're used to the original Casey Jones, the Law and Order Casey Jones, right? Uh, this guy, is, he doesn't have that. And it's just... It doesn't work. It makes no sense. The helmet, the mask looks good, but it's too fucking big, so it ends up looking ridiculous. It does. He 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 pulls up hockey sticks for no fucking reason. He finds them in, in the strangest places. He tapes roller skates to his fucking feet, and they stick. That was the dumbest shit ever. I'm sorry, spoiler, but I gotta give it to you. That shit was dumb. And he's literally skating around on this shit. It, it, this was a kids' movie plain and simple it was it looked good on dvd it might be fine for us if you want to regain that 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 uh ninja turtle feel but for the most part it was a kids movie i will say look forward to the bar scene with um casey jones and the famous turtle theme it's not a turtle theme but the ice man does cometh so <laughs> that was a bonus um I'm not gonna go into the ending. Just I'm just gonna say it was corny. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was very corny. It, it felt like the original. It felt like the first movie all over again, as far as the ending goes, but not as good. Um, the fight scene with Krang. If, the movie wasn't complete garbage. It was just really. It it didn't demand much of the audience, which tells me that it is specifically for children. So if you're taking your kids to the movies to see it, you're gonna have a, they're gonna have a great time. They're gonna love it because my youngest, he loved it. He loved. He's 12. He loved it. Uh, myself, I was sitting in the theater about maybe uh, uh, halfway through. I was like, God damn it, just end this shit. And if I thought the movie was like, it felt like the movie was like two or three hours. My oldest said that it was an hour and a half or something like that. I don't know, but it was it wasn't as long as it felt. But God, it felt long as hell. So that's that. Um, 
they sold um they sold cars as always <laughs> the ads were there um I, I just i don't know wait wait for the theater wait for the wait for the dvd if you can and i hate to see that say that because i really liked the turtles property i really really enjoyed the first one i really had high hopes for this one it wasn't garbage catching as a matinee fine but I don't think it's 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 not on tier with the rest of the movies you've seen come out. And I just recently saw the X Men movie, and the X Men movie took a lot of heat from a lot of people. I would prefer to see the X Men movie again. This one I can't go see over and over again. I could barely see it the first time. I could barely take it. So um, do with that what you will. I'm not trying to shit on the movie. I'm not a hater. I love turtles. I love turtles. I almost want to say I love being a turtle because I love turtles. But uh, this movie just wasn't for all the hype for all the the trailers that I thought were hugely successful um nah nah this this was not what I expected turtle van turtle van was kind of cool except the arms I'm going to give you the spoiler it's going to ruin it but I'm going to tell you now um so there's a point where it has nunchucks and there you have arms with nunchucks and they have it has a sword with an arm and they control it's stupid as fuck and that was the key in the beginning, that lets you know that this movie was going in the direction of your children. That's all I'm going to say. So, uh, let's rate it. What, what, we, what kind of rating will we give it? Um, I try not to give my pop culture and my my nerd movies too low of a rating because I want them to be successful. I want them to do well. I want them to keep being made. As an adult, uh, that's what... That's what that's what we'll do as an adult as an adult I will give it a three and a half four five because it looked good as a kid um at about 12 to 13 I'll give it about a five or a six now if I was about eh, somewhere between five years old and eight years old, or it's like a fucking, probably like a, a fucking seven or an eight. So those are your three scales, right? Based on age, all right? If you're an adult and um, you have an affinity for uh, the property, you'll go, you'll see it, you'll try your best to enjoy it, but you'll walk out like, wow, that was not for me. If you're a parent, yeah, you have a better chance of enjoying it. <sighs> But it's not what I wanted. Oh, by the way, one thing I want to point out before I get out of here: you have a police commissioner, the pol- the cop, right? And it's played by a woman. Remember the cop from the from the cartoon? It's a woman. All right, that's cool. I'm cool with that. She has an assistant, Asian assistant. This chick, yeah, fairly attractive. This chick has no lines. Like she's got like one or two lines throughout the whole freaking movie. I want to say I've seen her in other things. Uh, she had she had a bit of presence. I'm not understanding why I didn't give her any kind of lines. It, she it just it made no sense. Made no sense at all. Tyler Perry. I didn't get Tyler Perry. Hey, until next time. Uh, again, great, great. This has been a reaction. Out of the shadows, and um, I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, kids love it. Deuces! <laughs>